We're now going to demonstrate right-sided internal jugular CVC insertion. In order to do this procedure, I would position my patient lying completely flat if possible and with their head turned all the way as far as it will go to the left. I would have my ultrasound on my left hand side so that I could use my probe on the neck here. One of the more difficult things about learning to do this procedure is getting to grips with the ultrasound. One of the most helpful things I was ever told was to envisage the beam coming out of it about the width of a credit card. If I have this as the beam and the needle going in there, if you have your beam running the same direction as your needle, you should see it all the way down into the vein. Whereas if you have your beam like this, you will see a small bit of needle crossing the middle and nothing else except distortion in the tissues. Once you have positioned your patient and had a quick scan with the ultrasound to check the patency of the vessel, scrubbed up and set up your equipment. The next step is to clean the site with a 2% chlorhexidine lollipop. So we clean a wide area around where we're going. Allowing that a little bit of time to dry, we would then place a sterile drape over the patient with the long end down towards you. It's important to warn the patient that this is going to happen because it can be quite an uncomfortable sensation. We now put a small amount of jelly inside the bag and then get your assistant to dangle the probe in, grasp it inside the bag and advance this over the tubing. And secure it using one of the elastic bands in the kit. Following this, we will use the ultrasound to guide us in anaesthetizing the site. Place a small amount of jelly on the patient and then using the probe to find where the internal jugular vein is. On the monitor you should be able to identify the internal jugular which is a large circle which should be relatively easily compressible and on the left the pulsating common carotid artery. In real patients there can be some variation to what you see and sometimes the common carotid can be underneath the internal jugular or to the other side of it. Following this use the ultrasound to guide the needle down to just on top of the internal jugular and inject lidocaine through the tissues. In patients with a larger body habitus you may need to use the green needle in the pack. Using the ultrasound probe you can identify the relevant anatomy on the monitor. When you are happy use the probe to guide your needle down into the vein. It's important whilst you're doing this to be withdrawing on the syringe the whole time. So when you insert the needle, you should be able to see it down onto the top of the vessel, like this. You can just see it bouncing on top of the vessel there. From what I was talking about earlier, if you change the orientation of the probe, you just get a little bit of needle in the center of that. Whereas if you change again, you can see down from the top and happily into the vessel. Sometimes in real patients this vessel will be a lot more collapsible than it is and doing things such as asking them to breathe out and hold their breath or tilting the table down will help you in your insertion. When you're in the vein you should be able to see it on the monitor and should also get easy aspiration of blood. Once you're in the vein Remove the syringe and 
cover the tip of the needle with your thumb. The guide wire has a bend in the tip that is useful for guiding it into the vein. Insert the guide wire down the needle. It should pass easily into the vein. There are measures on the guide wire to show how deep you've gone. When you get to the second one or third one, it's usually enough. Remove your needle over the guide wire and then use the ultrasound to confirm the wire's position in the vein. As you can see there. The next step is to make a small incision in the skin in order to allow your dilator and ultimately your line to go in easily. There's a small scalpel contained within the CVC kit. Use this along the path of the guide wire to make a small incision in the skin. Following this, if you take the dilator thread it over the guide wire. Whenever you're inserting anything over a guide wire, always ensure that you have plenty of wire visible above what you're putting into the patient. Warn the patient that they're going to feel some pressure and then insert the dilator down the path of the guide wire. And remove. Once this is done, you're ready to insert your line over the wire. Ensure that the longest lumen is unclumped and using a similar technique to previous, insert the line over the guide wire. Which can be a fiddly bit. Once again, ensure that the guide wire is free out of the line. Advance the line into the vein and finally remove the guide wire and clamp the lumen. Check that you're in the right place by aspirating through the lumen and then flush all the lumens with normal saline. You can use one or two sutures and a sterile dressing to keep the line in position. You can also attach the transducer in order to monitor venous pressure. Once your line is in place, get a chest x-ray in order to confirm position.